It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, September 29th, 2011. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Hi, Bob. How are you doing today? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. Busy little beaver. (laughs) I can imagine. I mean, you're all over the place these days, Coast to Coast AM, Alex Jones. I mean, you're a busy man. I'm doing like 40 hours a week. (laughs) Wow. Wow. I find I have a hard time finding time to write. <laughs> I know, but you had an amazing article yesterday, your uh, recent gold takedown of a form of economic warfare. I want to talk about that one first because of this this shocking thing that transpired, the uh, gold and silver price drop. I mean, like I said, you broke this down in great detail in yesterday's publication of the International Forecaster. But for everyone that hasn't read it yet, Bob, what happened? Um. The uh, events in Europe were causing uh, the stock markets throughout the world, but particularly in Europe and the United States, to be under pressure. Um, people didn't quite know what was going to happen, and um, I think there was concern, and I think they wanted to make sure the markets stayed up. They didn't want it going down. And uh, so uh, they did what they normally do. They tried to stabilize the market and bring it back up again, which they did do. But in the meantime, uh, in order when the market was going down, they attacked gold and silver. All the insiders knew that there was going to be a increase in margin requirements in gold and silver and copper as well. And uh, they knew when it was going to happen, so they all jumped on for the ride and followed uh, JPM, GS, uh, City, uh, all the way down, and uh, then they started to cover, and then we started to get a base built in, which we were working on today. Gold goes up uh, 350 today, and I, I think we've seen the worst of it. I was a buyer personally uh, earlier in the week of gold, and uh, uh, I think we're going to turn around and go right back up again. The uh, German government, the Bundestag, approved the EFSF, which is an absolute disaster for Germany. It's not the money that they're going to lose by lending it to the six near-to-well countries who really don't care about anything. And they're going to continue to live the way that they have before. And if they can't, they won't work at all. Probably starve to death. And... um, and so uh, that's done. What is it going to cost? Um, probably they're talking in terms of three trillion, but they're wrong. It's going to cost five, and what is it? it's about one point three trillion. It's going to cost Germany, but the German citizen doesn't know that because uh, they're not going to tell them, and probably the most of the people in the Bundestag don't know that either. But what they've done by using the uh, ESFS is that they have given another committee, which is going to be based in Luxembourg, uh, the ability to handle the money, the conditions that's going to be given to the subsidized six countries. And what's going to be the final bill? Probably around six trillion. I use five as a middle figure. The German government says three point five. I told them four when they were talking about one, and they were wrong. Uh, the vote, five hundred and twenty-three to eighty-five. The reason the vote turned out that way, nobody wanted to be blamed for a close vote, because the German people are not very happy, and they want to break away from the Euro, the Eurozone, and the EU. And their leaders, like in the United States and other countries, in Congress, they are saying, this is what we got to do. Because most of them believe in world government or they're getting paid off. And so that's why you get the vote you get. And the German people know that. 
I mean, they went through something very similar in 1933. And, of course, we have the results of that, the 33 Enabling Act passed by the National Socialist Party, which in turn, in turn allowed Adolf Hitler to become dictator. And we get the same thing now in Washington. We get 12 appointed members, and then we get the president. They bypass Congress. All they have to do is send them legislation. They cannot discuss it, debate it, filibuster it, amend it. They can vote up or down, and that's it. And they're all paid off, too. So we're not going to get any decent legislation unless in the next election we're going to re elect somebody like Ron Paul and a lot of others like him. If we don't do that, America's doomed. But on the other hand, in, in Europe, and this will probably take about five years now to roll down when the German people who pay the most, and I always point them out, find out what it's going to cost, they're going to freak out. They're sick and tired of this. The whipping dog, this is uh, subsidized everybody else. Uh, that's about 26% of the action. About 24% <clears throat> belongs to Holland, Finland, France, and Austria. The other half belongs to the people who are accepting the money. So they're not going to put any money in. So the German figure, I just gave you 1.5 trillion, I think that was the number. That could double from there. I mean, this is going to wipe these countries out. They are not going to be able to prosper. They're going to have this millstone around their neck, servicing, or coming up, I should say, coming up with money, perpetually. It's not going to end. I mean, look at the, in Greece. They're, they're demonstrating every day 150, 300,000 people a day. And they're not going to work. And even when they change the government, it's not going to change. And they probably will leave the euro. And they should default totally. None of this 50% stuff. And even if it's only 50%, then the Irish and uh, the Portuguese will, maybe, or should, yes, do the same thing. The last Sunday I was on in Dublin, and they asked me, you know, Irish asked me what I thought. I said, walk away. Only why should you assume the debts of the banks when they're not yours? I mean, do you like giving money to the Queen of England and the Queen of the Netherlands and the Alpha Group, the Rothschilds? You people are dumber than dumb. The politicians sold them out. Even the party that's in there now, they're not much better. So this is what's going on in Europe. It's going to last for some time, but in the final analysis, it'll fall apart. And in the meantime, they're going to create money in order to service the needs of these six miscreants, and they're going to have to monetize that debt, so they're going to have substantial inflation for the next five or ten years from that alone. Uh, and the same thing's going to happen in the United States. And, uh, and England's a basket case. Uh, they'll probably go bankrupt too, but they're not in the Eurozone. And so uh, what's that going to do? Uh, inflation creates a desire for safety. Uh, because your buying power is depreciating, being whittled away. And so the only thing that people can do is buy gold and silver-related assets to be able to offset the effects of inflation. And that's going to happen both in Europe and England and in the United States. So the bull market in gold and silver will go on and on and on. And I would imagine out of these 823 legislators in the House of Representatives known as the Bundestag, and in the Senate too, which is known as the Bundesrat, uh, they're going to uh, be kicked out of office. And uh, Mrs. Merkel seems to think she's going to get away with doing what she's done, selling the country out along with the legislators. 
And I think she's going to be in for a surprise. But anyway, uh, that's why the markets went down. That's why they deliberately knocked gold and silver down. They based out. Uh, they'll do that probably for the next week or two. And then they'll run right back up again. That's why I bought this week. Yeah, that, I mean, that is the you know silver lining to all this, you know, the scandal and corruption you have going on in the markets. The fact that they, they knocked down the prices of gold and silver does give those of us who are wise, who are uh, investing in gold and silver, a chance to buy more gold and silver. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, Bob, what, what is the pulse of the people in Germany? Have you been getting any uh, emails from people in Germany regarding what's been transpiring in the Eurozone? I get four of them. Two of them, three of them, uh, said, uh, the, the, I don't know what the people are going to do, but they're going to be very unhappy. I got one letter that says the people won't do anything. Uh, they're a bunch of sheep just like the Americans and everybody else are. And they won't speak out. And that letter, uh, they tried to hold a couple of rallies. Uh, they couldn't attract more than 50 or 100 people. Um, I guess Germany's got it too good, and I guess they want to go along with the system. And that's what they did in 19... 19- 32 and 1933 and look where they ended up yeah i mean and i I think that's part of the reason why you have so many germans that are afraid to hit the streets because they're they're probably you know wise to you know history and they probably recognize that if a whole bunch of germans hit the street and started protesting you know a lot of people would be saying oh these these they're, they're just wanting to bring back uh you know the days of the third reich and most of them probably would never want to go back to that but at the same time you do see a growing number of neo nazis uh rising in in germany which is very very sad and tragic bob but i think eventually it's going to get to the point in the us and throughout the rest of europe the places that haven't yet started protesting where people are going to have no choice but to hit the streets because things are going to get so bad with inflation and food prices and shortages that the population is going to have no choice but to rise up. Well, Germany uh, has a very good economy right now, low unemployment. Uh, although a lot of people over 40 can't get jobs. but And I, and I have friends who live in Germany who tell me what's going on. Um, I think you're going to have to wait a while. Uh, there'll be protests, I'm sure, but that's about probably about it. And... Um, you know, the head of the uh, Socialist Party in Germany, uh, the Democratic Socialists, as they're called, is a lady. And uh, she really took them apart for all the secret meetings we were having and uh, secret um, agreements and all this sort of thing. Everything was done behind closed doors. And uh, uh, people were pretty upset about it in the other party. There's the Greens, too, but they're very small. Free Democrats have been getting killed in the elections. And so um, I think probably the socialists might very well prevail in the next election. Uh, you get a similar situation in France for different reasons. The uh, middle-of-the-road party, which is uh, Sarkozy's party, uh, will be challenged by the socialists. I don't know who they're going to run, but I don't think it's going to be um, stress con. And that gives, uh, Lorena, uh, uh, Le Pen, Marina Le Pen, a, a very good chance of getting very close to winning the presidency. Uh, I think she can get at the outside 28% of the vote, but if there's three or four parties running, uh, that's going to put her in first or second place, probably second. Her father got second place, and he had 20% of the vote. And um, I would suspect that it would be a tough re-election for Sarkozy against her. Uh, She's been in politics since she was 22. That's about 26, 7 years. The last time I saw her, uh, she was about 22, and she'd just been elected for the first time. And uh, I know the Le Pen family quite well. And um, and so uh, that's possible there. Um, there is a great problem 
and people in business and finance in Europe, they know that. Um, but they all want the politicians and the big companies. They want one, all want one world government. And, of course, that's not the answer. Uh, that is uh, a method of subjecting people, enslaving them. And most of them don't understand. And all these do-gooders and politicians and heads of companies, they're going to find out what happened to the Russians and the Germans who went along and expedited the program. And they were the first one shot. So uh, that's what you get uh, look to look forward to, people who voted for this. So it's not going to go away. It's bad. And uh, I, I just don't see really any improvement all along the way. But it could take time. Yeah, and I, I think that everything that's transpiring throughout the world, Bob, is hastening and quickening uh, the the uh, situation that we've been talking about for so long now, the possibility of eventually a third world war, a, another Great Depression, and even the one world government that the Illuminati are have been dreaming about for so long now. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, moving across the pond to the uh, good old USA, uh, things aren't going so well here. According to a recent Gallup poll, 49% of Americans believe that the federal government has become so large and powerful that it poses an imminent threat to the rights and freedoms of ordinary citizens. And along with the drills that uh, went on last week in Denver, along with uh, this week in D.C., and the record numbers of people unemployed, uh, the TSA's NFL invasion, and this um, Occupy Wall Street movement that's growing across the country, not just in Wall Street, but other cities as well. Bob, how close are we getting in the U.S. towards martial law? Well, at least until after the next election. And uh, it, that's a hard one to call. Uh, I would say two or three years, maybe four or five. It, it's, it's not going to be imminent because get an election coming up. And uh, they control both parties, the people behind the scenes. They control most of the people who are running for office, and they do that with money. And so they really don't care who gets elected. They're going to buy them anyway. And there are sec exceptions, but, you know, you can't have 10% of Congress and expect to make any traction. It's impossible. And so at the next election, if there's not great gains made uh, by people who want to make change, positive change, then the game's over. I mean, we either wait for them to have their martial law and tell you what to do, or I, 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 I couldn't be there. I mean, they'd immediately put me in an internment camp. I mean, they've been, they've been after me for years. In fact, I don't know if I mentioned in the program, but uh, one of the programs I was on, they email bombed the site and put all kinds of nasty things up about me. And it was all traced back to the Bank of America in northern uh, New Jersey, which we find now is working for the government as a beard. In other words, they're funding for them. And they're going after journalists. And we, we approve this. And radio personalities, people who disagree with government and what they're doing. And this is a full capturing of what they've done. And this has been going on with me for years. I mean, far along before the advent of uh, the Internet, 1967, they started. And I bet you don't know many people who were well, audited by the IRS 15 years in a row, do you? Wow. That shows you how much they like me. <laughs> 15 years, and I never owed a dime. But my attorney fees and accounting fees ran about $150,000 a year. And I just found out recently that the attorney that handled that for me, Bruce Hochman, who is one of the eminent tax attorneys in America I had died and I felt bad because he was a great guy and he helped a lot of people and um, 
and uh, sorry to leave him, see him leave, but you know, sooner or later we all have to go. But um, those are the kind of things I went through. When I had a brokerage firm, every single day, I would have the NESD, the SEC, straight le- state re- regulators in my office, just causing havoc. And that went on for years. Unbelievable. And they never found anything wrong. I mean, I never paid any fines. And uh, But that's when you, you, know, you, you get out front and you tell people the truth. And they don't like you very much. Well, that's okay. I'm not running a popularity contest. I mean, that, that's just sad, Bob. I mean, it's just another prime example, a, a real slap in the face as to how bad things are in this government. Instead of the police focusing on going after the real criminals, the FBI investigating uh, the, the real bad guys, the corporatist elite, and those that are responsible for the mess we're in, uh, they have more important things to do, like go after yourself and uh, Gibson guitars and uh, pepper spray and beat and arrest uh, protesters in Wall Street than the real criminals. I mean, how, I mean how, how much more obvious can it get that we, we live in a criminal society? That's true. And that's what those demonstrations are about. Uh, the problem is, for me, I don't like, and, and, and I might preface this by saying, everybody in America has a right to protest within the law, following the law, and um, but these people, most of them are leftists, communists, socialists. There are others too. And uh, but I don't disagree with what they're doing. They're doing the right thing. And as an old saying, your enemy's enemy is your friend. So I'm not going to knock them. Let them do their best. Yeah, I agree entirely. And I've been doing a lot of uh, research into the uh, the basic um, the population um, breakdown of the um, Occupy uh, Wall Street movement and. I know several people up in New York have gone in there, you know, interviewed some people. And unfortunately, you're absolutely right, Bob. Most of the uh, protesters there are are socialists. They're, they're blaming capitalism for what's going on when the truth is what we have isn't capitalism. At best, it's it's crony capitalism. It's corporatism. And it, it's just really, really sad when you have people like Michael Moore showing up, cheering them on, talking about how uh, we, we don't need to worry about the Federal Reserve we need to worry about capitalism. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty bad, Bob. Now he's an opportunist making a lot of money off this movement, so to speak. He knows what he's doing. He's not dumb. And I don't think he cares. It's just a job. Yeah, and I mean, if, if that's exactly how these people feel when it comes to Occupy Wall Street, I mean, if, if they feel like uh, the Federal Reserve is not the problem and it's capitalism, then... I, I got news for them. They've got it. They've got it bass backwards. Mm-hmm. And that's true. But that's okay. That you know that type will always be that way. Uh, generally speaking, they're not bad people. Uh, they just are misguided. And a lot of people who, over the years, have been radically on the left or on the left, uh, they have gone through. Uh, a metamorphosis because during their life of being married and having children, they had to get involved in society. And their attitudes fundamentally stayed the same, but they realized that they had to fit in if they wanted to survive financially. And that's what the system does to you, forces you to do. And I've had many, many of them come as subscribers and I'm happy to have them because it brings people in together into the center where they can discuss the problems of the country and discuss how to combat them and they can work out their differences later. Well, I agree entirely, Bob, and I have nothing against uh, the people's point of view. I think that that's one of the things about this country that makes it great, well, at least it's supposed to, is the, uh, people's right to have different opinions and viewpoints on matters. But at the same time, it is very, very concerning that, I mean, they, 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 they're, they're doing a good thing because they're actually protesting Wall Street, which is, I think, a, a big part of the, the problem. 
and not everybody in Wall that works in Wall Street's bad. Okay, I'm not trying to stereotype there or anything, but I mean, all these other groups have been going to uh, Washington over the years, like the Tea Party movement, the 912 Project. You know, hanging out on the Washington Mall. Uh, they're not really solving the problem, and I think I think actually going to Wall Street. Uh, protesting in front of there and protesting in front of the Federal Reserve and the CFR. That's where we need to be, in my opinion. Well, I don't see any Tea Party people out there. And uh, it would be a good idea if they joined them. Uh, and they can put up banners that, that say, uh, capitalism is not bad, uh, but the, the, the Fed and Wall Street are stealing from us. And that would add a little variety. But they don't want to do that. They think uh, they're going to be able to do it through the system. And they may, but I doubt it. And if Ron Paul is not elected and people like him, the game's over. And if you've ever spoken out against the government in any way, you'll be in a camp eventually. A lot of people will leave the country. And that's understandable. In fact, they're already leaving. I get about 10 or 20 letters every day. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you entirely on that one too, Bob. The fact that the Ron Paul 2012 campaign, in, in my honest opinion, is probably the last real shot we have of getting um, a good person elected to the White House that could actually start turning the ship around. Now, he's obviously not going to be able to do it overnight, as you mentioned a moment ago. Even if we got 10% change in Congress, that would still be a, we'd still have a – big giant hill to climb well hill i mean mountain <laughs> but at the same time it would start turning that ship slowly back towards the right direction and i i sincerely hope that if bob if ron paul doesn't get the gop nomination that he will decide to go for broke as a third party art independent candidate what's your take on that well i think he should do that as well and i hope jesse ventura runs with him and uh, Jeffrey, he's a no-nonsense person. And um, he calls it the way it is, just like I do. And uh, the, the people have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he's been a politician previously. And he's been uh, in movies and, and radio. And uh, he's a former Navy SEAL. So, you know, the guy's done it all. And uh, I think they'd appeal to a lot of people, whether they can win or not remains to be seen, but uh, and, and they'll pull out all stops to stop them. They'll rig elections, and it'll be awful, really. And you're going to find out how down and dirty these people are. And if Ron Paul wins, he knows darn right well they're going to try to kill him. So it's very, very dangerous. And at his stage in life, which is two months older than I am, uh... He thinks probably like I do. I want to help, and uh, I know they might very well kill me, but I'm willing to risk that. And he's already said that um, by running. You know, he's saying, all right, take your best shot. And they will. And if he's elected, or it looks like he's going to be elected, they will try. Yeah, I mean, it's sad that, that they're out there and they're <laughs> – plotting against Ron Paul as they always have been. Right now, it's obvious that they're attacking him with words through the uh, GOP establishment, through the uh, mainstream media. Even the, the liberal establishment on the controlled left is going after him, falsely accusing him of, of being a racist. Of course, that, that's their favorite tactic. They love throwing out the race card. And I, I sincerely believe that if enough people were to wake up and, and break free from this two-party puppet show and – realize that most of these guys running our current president just go by his track record and see how much in common he has with uh, Bush I mean the people that, that love Bush so much should love Obama in my opinion but look at Obama then look at the other guys on, on running in the Republican Party like Perry Romney Bachman Gingrich Kane that corporatist uh, and just realize for the most part they're, they're not that different and I mean if the American people who it, it seems like by all the polls that have been coming out recently and the, the growing discontent in this country that more and more people are fed up with both parties and the government, you think they would be out there ready for real change? Well, I think half of them, 
either don't understand or don't care. So it's the other half that makes a difference. In fact, most of them, uh, they don't, uh, they don't even vote. And so it lies with half the population. And, um, you know, let's see what we can do. I mean, there's always plenty of places to, to move to. I mean, your homes are worth virtually nothing because of what these people have done to you. And uh, most people don't have any money. It's terrible. The middle class is getting decimated. And so wasn't the retirees. There's no cola. There should be. They just arbitrarily say, we're going to take your money and use it on something else. Even though you paid it in, this is not an entitlement, mind you. What it is, is a promise to pay. And what most people overlook, because they never read the 34 Act, uh, which pertained to uh, the um, Social Security legislation, but it says in there, if there's no money in the till, the government has to sell bonds in order to give these people their benefits. So what they're doing is illegal. But they don't care. They're trying to cut in behalf of the debt extension bill $1.5 trillion from the budget over the next 10 years. And the idea is one-third from military, a third from Social Security, and a third from Medicare. Well, I can't think of anything more absurd. I mean, why don't they start cutting these welfare programs? These people have never paid in anything to, for them. It's a good question. It is a very, very good question. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And the reality of the situation is when it comes to so many people that are on welfare, that have been on welfare for so long now, is the, the government's done that by design as well and because they know that they have those people in their pockets. So when things do get bad, they can simply unleash those who are dependent on the government in whatever form or fashion, whether it's uh, via welfare or you know employment into the government. They can, they can use those people against the rest of the citizens. And they usually call them shock troops. They have a vested interest. I mean, th th they don't really grasp that that point because they can't see the big picture. All they see is, oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm getting a check from the government. I'm being taken care of, so I, I like the status quo. I like the way things are. And the moment uh, that dries up and they're like, hey, where's my check? The government's like, well, it's um, over there. See those guys over there protesting us that are evil uh, extremists? Uh, they're the ones who took your money. So guess what's going to happen? Um, <laughs> you're going to have, well, a very, very bad situation in the U.S., unfortunately. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. And uh, there's a number of things within society that point in that direction. And it, it's, it's not the America I knew. I guess I could say I have realized what America has been for 70 years. And you always expect change, although most older people won't accept it. Uh, and I think that the changes have been so radical the older people can't handle it. They just can't handle it. And they kind of slink away and say, I don't want to know. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's all old people, Bob. I mean, my, for example, my, my grandma, she, she's pretty much content with the way things are. I mean, she's not an Obama supporter, but she's content with, with everything else. And, but at the same time, you know, you have other individuals like my grandfather who does actually listen to me. You know, he taught me everything I know about uh, 
what what the Republican Party was supposed to be about, you know, freedom, liberty, limited government and whatnot, even though, you know, as I grew up, I came to realize that that wasn't exactly the case. But at the very least, at least he does listen to what I have to say about Ron Paul and everything else. But th- there's different groups, I think. And it's a it's not just uh, senior citizens, Bob. It's it's basically the, the, the grand scope of the populace. Uh, at all levels, there seems to be a majority of them that are jellyfish, zombies, sheeple who don't want to listen. They, they just think if, if, if they don't listen, uh, they won't get any trouble and uh, they'll be left alone. Well, that's generally the case. That's the way people think. Now they're going to pass me by, but it's not going to work that way. And this is all-encompassing. And, you know, you've got uh, our adversaries who have billions of dollars at their disposal. And there is a a very difficult road in trying to combat them. And even if they do things and get caught at it, whatever that may be, uh, they they still are going to go forward. Because they can't go back. Think about that. They can't go back. They either win or they lose. And so we're going to arrange for them to lose and take away their power, which is the positions that they hold as people who run banks and brokerage firms and major transnational corporations and uh, these are the people who are behind this and these people have got to pay for what they've done and they will they don't believe that but they will Uh, they've awakened a sleeping beast and uh, the beast is going to get pretty nasty and um you know, when you get nothing to, nothing to lose, you go for it. And uh, I think that's what's going to happen eventually. But I don't think it's going to hap- happen quickly. Things aren't bad enough yet. And we get this big welfare in that, uh, even though uh, I forget the percentage, what is it, 18% of the people or 20%, 20% live in poverty in America. Uh, but they get food stamps, extended unemployment. And so we get a lot of people going on disability who are are laid off and will never work again. It's a scam for for most of the people who are on it. They even get kids on it. I couldn't believe it. I mean, people, some of which have never even paid into the system. It's just another form of socialism, subsidies. And all that will wear thin, because as, as inflation gets greater, the payments are not going to go up. Well, living is going to get harder and harder. And uh, that's where we're headed with this thing. And in Europe and in England, same thing. And sooner or later, a year, two years, three years, we'll have martial law. And then you and I won't be on the radio. I won't be able to publish. And in all likelihood, they'll try to hunt me down. And uh, they better get their inoculations before they come, the lead poisoning. Because uh, at my stage, I ain't going to any internment camp. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still uh, way younger than you are, Bob, but I'm, I feel the exact same way. Uh, I I have no intention of going to uh, any sort of camp at all, whether it's a FEMA camp, internment, uh, re-education, or concentration camp. I I just say no to camps, Bob, and I fully uh, am prepared. And I've been mentally preparing myself for some time now to that possibility that one night, you know, one morning they could come for me. And if they do, uh, I've you know made preparations. I have been fortifying my home. And I happen to know a thing or two about uh, Second Amendment devices. And I'd rather go down that way than, you know, rotting in a camp. So that's, that's the way I'd rather go out. Well, I agree, and I think you're right. And 
it could come to that. We'll find out. And um, it's it's you know it's really disappointing that this wonderful wonderful country that so many people gave so much for is being destroyed by a bunch of criminals who want to enslave the world, never mind just the Americans. And people don't get it. They just don't get it. No, they don't. And that's what's sad. I mean, I dream of the day where instead of harassing protesters, whether it's a Tea Party, um, We Are Change, uh, Occupy Wall Street, or any other group out there that's speaking out against the government from different uh, you know, you know, know, pallets, different uh, spectrums, instead of harassing them or going after them, I dream of the day when police will actually go after the real criminals. That's what I'm hoping for. One day, you see them you know, dragging off these, these corporate bigwigs and these banksters and uh, those in government who are you know, part of this entire uh, criminal empire that they've been building and festering and growing like a cancer for too long now. That's what I want to see eventually. Are, are policemen and women actually arresting the right people for a change? Well, let's hope that uh, transpires. Uh, the uh, the hold that the federal government is trying to get over law enforcement in America is is a major effort by government. And I tell people in law enforcement that you got to do make the right choice, which is the people uh, which you live among. And if you don't, and you do what the government tells you to do. You don't stand a chance. Don't stand a chance. You're absolutely correct about law enforcement. And I have a prime example here in the city of Shreveport, Louisiana, a population of a couple hundred thousand people. Uh, starting in 2009, uh, a new branch of the Shreveport Police Department was formed uh, called the Community Response Unit, the CRU. And while the uh, regular police uh, of Shreveport, they drive around in white police cars with red, white, and blue patriotic-looking logos, uh, the CRU, Bob, they drive around in these, these black squad cars with yellow writing that says CRU on it. And I found out from an inside source that, yes, in fact, the CRU is federally funded. And it's not just this group here in the uh, Shreveport area. Uh, they have groups like this federally funded uh, branches of police departments growing throughout the country. And if they do what the feds have them do, want them to do, instruct them to do, they're toast. I mean, the public's got as good weaponry as they have. I mean, there's 80 million veterans in the country, 40 million have seen combat. I mean, what does that tell you? That that tells me, Bob, that that, that's the one advantage that our country has over all these other countries, England, Europe, the UK, whereas they have very, very strict gun laws and they have hard, some, most of them have no guns. Some of them are lucky to have any, but we still do have uh, firearms, you know, even though they're obviously going to be doing everything they can to try and uh, stop that and, and curtail that and eventually take them away from us. I don't think that's going to be so uh, easy, especially with how bad things are now. I mean, I think that it's going to get really, really bloody. And my honest opinion, I think we've done everything we've possibly could do peacefully to try and turn things around. And I think the Ron Paul 2012 election is one of our last few chances to bring about anything, real possible change, without violence. I think you're right. I agree. I've been talking about it. Lots. And... uh... We're just going to have to see what happens. In the meantime, people have got to plan for unemployment and other things like that. And um, that's real important. Getting freeze-dried dehydrated foods, a water filter, you know, something to protect your family and know how to use it and have plenty of ammo. And there's a, a hundred other items you could buy that you might need, because a lot of people are going to end up unemployed. I mean, perhaps uh, another uh, 25, 30 percent of the population. And uh, how are they going to feed themselves? I mean, you look at the 
payout for food stamps. What is it, three or four hundred dollars a month? That's certainly not adequate to feed people. And uh, so I, I expect that you should do that. You get ready. Not for a revolution. Just get ready for hard times. And that that is some of the best advice out there. I mean, especially with the fact that the crime rate is only going to continue to go up because a lot of these people who had jobs, who in normal circumstances, they would never, ever conceive of the idea of turning towards crime. But without a job, with barely enough money coming in to put food on the table or pay the bills or the car note or the mortgage, uh, you're going to have a growing number of people in this country and other countries, and this has happened before, they're, they're going to start robbing each other, and it's going to get worse and worse. Well, I had the same conversation a long time ago with John Dillinger, and he agreed with me. <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's another fact. You're going to have, uh, I mean, the, I mean, this year alone, I mean, uh, bank robberies are, are up to new highs, and that's going to continue. It doesn't matter how much technology they have in banks. People are still going to go about the old-fashioned way of, you know, like Dillinger and go into the banks and rob them because that's the best place to go get money or convenience stores. So you're definitely going to have robberies uh, on the rise. More people are going to steal copper. I mean, that's been going on for the past couple of years now. So, I mean... <laughs> It's just going to continue to get worse and worse. Well, that's true. And unfortunate, but true. And it's just sad, though, because it, 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 you look at that, you see the direction things are going, and you know that that's exactly what the powers that be. The, that, that's what they want. They want us all to turn into criminals so they can justify their police state grid, so they can justify martial law in a one-world government. Yeah, that's true. I, I do a program out of Indianapolis with Stan Solomon, have for several years, and the chief of police comes on the program. We discuss these things, you know, in a very positive sense. And, um, and you know, they get their work cut out for them. You know, how far do you go? How far do you allow the government to go? I mean, when someone who shouldn't, is in a position of authority, says, well, go over to that house over there because that guy, uh, he doesn't like the government and uh, we think he's got drugs in the house. So let's go kick the door down and uh, let's uh, take him away to jail. And if he's got a gun, just, you know, shoot him 30 or 40 times, which happened just recently, about a month or two ago. And, you know, that's the mentality of some of these people. Yeah, and, and and that's nothing new. I mean, it's just been police brutality has been skyrocketing over the past ten years alone, and it's just sad to, to see the direction everything is going because everything feels like it's going uh, down the toilet. And we we not only have this police state that we have to worry about in martial law and the depression, but also the the very real possibility of a third world war. I mean. In the final few minutes we have left, turning towards the Middle East, I mean, we see uh, tensions growing between the U.S. and Pakistan. The Palestinians are trying to get statehood. Meanwhile, you have the U.S. and Israel trying to do everything they can possibly to stop that. And now Iran is threatening to send naval ships to patrol off the east coast of the U.S., of course, in in international waters, in response, of course, to what the U.S. has been doing for so long now with their uh, U.S. naval presence in the Persian Gulf. Bob, what is your take regarding the situation in the Middle East? I mean, is all this leading to a possible Third World War? Well, I think all of the groundwork's being laid. If you look at history, and particularly the history of the people who are behind the scenes here, uh, every time that they get in a tough situation, they just have another war. And they profit by it, too, and they most of them usually survive. And uh, so, yes, they're going to have a war. And is it being laid out in the Middle East? Probably. They don't care about Islam or the Muslims or any of that. They're, you know, they're just somebody to be harvested and dumped in a hole. you got to talk to me, these people. you got to understand where they're coming from. In order to understand 
you have to understand or be able to understand the criminal mind. And when you do, and if you can, then you'll understand what these people are up to. Yeah, I mean, I agree entirely. I mean, most of these people in, in the Illuminati and the elite are sociopaths, they're psychopaths, they're criminals. They don't see the rules that we have to follow as their rules. They have their own set of, of rules. They, they see us as bugs, and it doesn't matter if you're Christian or Muslim, Jewish or atheist. They, they see us all as one and the same. And with, with all this stuff going on in the Middle East, it continues to get worse and worse, this al Qaeda spring that's been transpiring. I mean, I, I, just, I see a scenario playing out to where I think history is going to look at the Third World War as possibly uh, beginning maybe 10 years ago when we first went into Afghanistan and Iraq. Well said. And, uh, and I feel heartfeltly for the people who are in the military because they know now what's going on. They know these wars are all make-believe in behalf of the people who start them on both sides. It's usually the same parties. And they know that the situation is the way it is, and they're trying to defend their country, and they're caught in the crossfire. And it's a tough situation. They're good people. They have a tough life. I know I've been there and done that. And, uh, yeah, I'm one of the few living veterans. <laughs> but anyway... Um, it, it's a tough spot for them to be in. And most all of them are good people. And uh, it's just a shame that things have degenerated to where they are today. And that's all by design, which makes it even more disappointing. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole when you look at the whole big picture, the whole thing is, is tragic, to say the least. Bob, we got about a minute left. Uh, how can people get the International Forecaster? Well, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Published Wednesday and Saturday by email. Runs around 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet. And everything you need to know each week is in that publication. You can get a free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. The International, F O R E C A S T E R dot com, or to www.intforecaster dot com, intforecaster dot com. You can also, if you'd like to submit questions, we answer everyone, or if you'd like a copy, or if you'd like a copy of our latest report on gold and silver shares, uh, we'll send that out to you as well. And you go to our email for that, Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Bob at intforecaster dot com. And those of you who like to call toll-free, that number is 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. You can get both copies there, and they have a special there, which is a free one-year subscription. So if you're thinking of subscribing, go there, because the deal that they're offering is terrific. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.